Hi, I'm Ash from Bitlow Social Club, and on this episode, I've got Steve Kelly with me from Skelly Brickwork. Is that it? That's it, yeah. Um, over St Albans Way, and we're going to talk everything about brickwork, and um, yeah. So, Steve, nice to meet you. And you, Ash. Right, mate. Um, yeah, so why brickwork? Uh, I don't know, really, sort of. How did you, how did you end up in it? Uh, my dad, he was, a, he was a bricklayer. Yeah. So, sort of went on from him, working with him. So you're from like a long generation, is your granddad a bricklayer? No, no, no. No, so no. past two generations? Yeah, yeah, just my father. And, and uh, yeah, just did bricklaying from there. Okay. And would you, what college did you go to? Wilson. Wilson, okay. So that's what, North London is it? Yeah, that's it. North yeah. London, okay. And uh, how did you find college? Yeah, college was good. There were some good lectures, yeah. good teachers. And they knew their stuff. Knew, was not yeah. And you've got a son who's just gone to college, haven't you? Yeah, my boy Daniel. Yeah. Okay, and I think Dan Daniel's on Instagram, isn't he, as well? Yeah, he's on Instagram, some work. he yeah. has bits. Um, and how did you find Daniel got through college? So compared to you now, so obviously, we've, we've been talking in the past with other bricklayers um, about apprenticeships and whatnot. Obviously, my apprenticeship was about 10 years ago. Your apprenticeship was what? 20 years ago, maybe? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, he's at 48 now, so I started when I was 16, straight from college. So, 32 so, years ago? Yeah. 32 years ago, it's pretty late. So, from how your son got on to how you got on, how do you think he got on at college? The first college he went to wasn't great. Okay. I don't, yeah, he, he didn't like it there. Right. He thought he wasn't getting taught properly. Uh, so we moved him over to Wilsdon. Where you learnt, yeah? Where I learnt, yeah. My, my mate there, he's uh, he's one of the top lecturers there, so oh, nice. he helps him on and that. So yeah, he got him in there and he's, he got a lot better okay. being at Wilsdon. So, and, and what do you think, do you think that was to do with the lecturers that we've got now? Or what do you, what do you think's yeah, got? I, I don't know if you can blame the lecturers totally. I think it's, I think a lot of the students that go there don't really want to be bricklayers. They just something to do. Something to do. Made to go there, I think, as well, to so they can get whatever past time money they need to, you know, a bit of social money. Well, I don't. I'm not too sure, but I think a lot of them it's just, you know, just put in there. But they don't really want to be there. Yeah, yeah, I'm not so you're saying. Yeah, there's no. A lot of them ain't really got sort of the heart. Yeah. I mean, I remember when I was at college, there was always, there's always one or two that you knew just didn't belong there. And I think that group's got bigger, where yeah. you had, say you had 15 blokes in the workshop, there was 10 of you, all, all grafted, loved it, all wanted to be bricky, like pigs in shit. And now, I think you're finding that there's maybe one or two in a whole class of mm. 30, almost, yeah. who want to be bricklayers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's a case of, we've got to stop wasting them like wasting time, yeah, because we haven't got any bricklayers. Yeah, I think the problem is though, if there's only two or three that want to be bricklayers, they can't warrant paying the, the lecturer to only teach two or three no, people, of and that, that's the issue. No, and, I, and, I, and I've heard a couple of things in a couple of colleges where they've taken the, the bricklayers that are showing their passion, they've taken them out of the level one or level two groups and they've put them in put them in with the level threes because if you've made it that far to level three you you're you're more interested aren't you mm. typically if you don't get through level one you're not going to be a brick player. no um and if you get into level two and you're struggling again you're not going to be a brick player, really yeah, yeah, yeah if you're getting into level three and you're still there and you're still loving it you you're, you're on the right path to becoming a brick player, a skilled brick player. yeah 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 no definitely I think it's like what uh, Rob Song always said the other day about the floater. Yeah, you've got the floater, about. the bricklayer, and you've got like the super, super trail. trail that's it. it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that made a lot of sense to me. Yeah, I've, I've met people like that over the years. Yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah, they are quite a bit sort of in common with what Rob was saying. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah he, he made a lot of sort of sense. Yeah, I, I definitely say I've come across. A lot of floaters and a lot of bricklayers, and it's not very often you come across a super trail. Like I've probably met four in my life that I've worked with that I yeah, know yeah. that I've worked with. Yeah. Um, you might be one, I might be one. We haven't worked together, but I definitely have met four 
um, super trials who live and breathe it, phones don't stop ringing, and their work is just like, it's textbook. Like, you couldn't, they, there's nothing wrong. Yeah, yeah. We need more Britain like that, 100%. <laughs> you do, but in some cases as well, you look at someone's work and it's, you think, well, that's a bit rough, that's a bit this. Sometimes it's not the bricklayer's fault. No. It's how they've had to do the job. Like a lot of jobs, scaffold, it, it kills me. It does my head in at times. Yeah, yeah. Where you'd be on a job and they won't adapt a lift to help you. Yeah. So you've got a man below holding yeah. the level while you're trying to drop down. Yeah. And then when it's all down, someone goes, why oh, is there a belly in the wall? And you say, well, you try and build that without yeah. causing that. And I, just, I don't know, I just, to me, there ain't a lot of help anymore for bricklayers. No. You're sort of thrown in, just get over it, mate, just do it. I think, I think arguably, we're probably, I mean, after I spoke to an electrician today, actually. He was a, uh, I think he was a contracts manager or a foreman for an electric company. And he said bricklayers are probably one of the most underrated and um, discarded crafts there are. He said, I, he said, I don't understand how electricians and plumbers um, are all at the top, but bricklayers always seem to make it down at the bottom, when actually what they do is a lot. Of, and I looked at him and went, are you trying to suck me off or something, yeah? <laughs> but he was right, and what, the more he was talking, the more sense he was making, is that not even the money side of it, he says, what you guys have to learn and do and setting out, um, the even the problem solving, um, I did look at him and say, look, if you give me three wires, I'd probably look at it a bit like, well, what's going on here? Um, but he said, yeah, the problem solving, setting out, all the different finishes that you've got. It's not just stretcher bond and half round. There's probably well, there's at least seven, eight different types of brick bond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's t easily 12 different joint finishes. Um, running cables is running cables. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you see how we're kind of disregarded as just a wet trade at the bottom. We're down there with plasterers, painters and bricklayers. I mean, like no disrespect to the plasterers out there or the painters and decorators, but we've got a little bit on you. Like, <laughs> we have done, you know what I mean? I think with the skill of bricklayer now, it's sort of been taken away from the bricklayer by a lint wall cut made with a, yeah. an arch on it. Yeah. Just stick it up there. Says. Anyone can point it. And it looks instead of setting out your arch and all nice. your bossoirs and all yeah. that and cutting them it's that that's sort, of, that's sort of taken away from from it now so the, the, the sort of skill you were taught you forget i've forgotten a lot of stuff that i was taught at college because yeah. i don't do it enough do you know what i mean and it's a shame i think that that's gone out of the game yeah um, i think i was looking at um i want to say it was it wasn't St Albans College, it wasn't. <laughs> it might have been, uh, I can't remember what college it was, but they were actually setting out on timber, showing them how to cut their templates out, timber templates. I shared it today, in fact. Yeah, I see, yeah, I see that. And they were setting out their basket weave, and they were also cutting out their template for a bullseye, I think. And I thought, fuck, I didn't, I no one showed me that at college. Yeah. And that was yeah. 12 years ago, 13 years ago, and no one showed me that. I've learned, I've learned, I know how to do I it. I think, uh, Grant from college as well looks quite good. Yeah, Grant from college. I'll follow them. Yeah, yeah, I share a bit with Grant from college. Um, and there's another one, which is Young Brickies. They've mm -hmm. done a lot of straight walls, but they've started incorporating a few details, doing a bit of polychrome brickwork in there as well. Um, uh, piers, but then they instead of just building a pier and putting a uh, brick on edge or roll-up course on top, they're putting creasing tiles. We didn't get creasing tiles well at college, but they're... They're buying the extra little materials that do make a difference to a wall, yeah, yeah. which I think does help. Yeah, no, no, that's good. Yeah, I think that's what they need. That's just a boost in the college, I think. Yeah, I mean, there was, I mean, I, I deal with SB Tools quite a lot, and um, one of the things is, uh, I won't name the college, um, but it's near where SB Tools is. Um, they can't even afford to pay for the tools for the bricklayers in the, the workshop because the cost of materials have gone through the roof. So the funding that they get, they can't afford tools, just the basic tools, trowels, bolsters, lump hammers, levels, they can't afford it. Because yeah, the materials yeah. are too all that business, all that business yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. A level's a level. Yeah, you don't, you don't need Stabila 
to stop to start with. Start to start with, no. I mean, you you, you use this a bit of as if you walk on site with a Wix's one. Yeah, but bricklayers think you're a Bengali Lancer. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so yeah, it's sort of. It is the Rolls Royce levels. Everyone knows that. Yeah, well, we, well they've got superior use. now, haven't they? Yeah, they're a bit, they're a bit premium. They are, but I wouldn't want to use one of them on site. They're too nice. I've, I, I do use one on site. They're all right. Yeah. They're just a bit on the heavy side. Are they? But I like something a bit heavy. Yeah, that that level to me looks like the st stability one. one. The, the the Gerda one. The one yeah, meter. the Gerda one. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, an old, uh, an old brick lad that worked with me, Mick, he swore by them. He said, because you could give them a good, sort of good clout. clout if you had to, <laughs> which you shouldn't have to. But Well, I, I swore by the, um, the six foot level, and everyone thought I was nuts about the six foot level. But if you actually, f the, if you plumb in a larger area, the, the, your wall's got to be more true. Yeah, I agree. I do all my block work. A six foot level. Love a six foot level, um, and then I do most of my setting out with a two foot level. I don't really use my twelve hundred that much. It's either my two foot because I'm doing small areas like setting out or building a little corner, and I go to the six foot. Yeah. Because I'm covering a larger area. Even if I'm leveling, you think if you if you're leveling with a twelve hundred, you're only covering twelve hundred. You, you level with an eighteen hundred, well you've leveled the whole area. So. In theory, mm. if you move the level twice, that's 12 foot. Oh, I've had a yes. cock up in there somewhere. <laughs> I ask all of them. I ask everyone, you've got to have had a cock up somewhere. Oh, God. Where'd you start? So, I was, so Dean, Dean Neal, the traditional bricklayer, he, I'm trying to remember what he done now, he built a garage back to front. So the slab, the run on the slab, um, to the drawing was wrong, so he actually put the entrance to the garage the wrong way. Matt from D5, um, he forgot wind posts, cavity tray, and windows in a plot. <laughs> yeah, um, I've forgotten. What did I forget? I mean, cock ups, I mean, there's a lot of things I've forgotten, but that's just the nature of the beast. Uh, Mistakes wise, we went to the wrong side of the line once on a big garage, yeah. And uh, it only came to light when the chippy was doing <laughs> his hip roof. And he went, You bought his 100 mil out of square, and we we're like, Nah, we <laughs> nah, we ain't. Honestly, it's bang on, mate, it's sweet, it's good. And then we looked at it, and we thought, Shit, we've gone to the wrong side of the line, but over a long run, it's to pick up so yeah so how did, you, how did you get around that one did you take... didn't it, it just it, it only got found out once the wall plates were on and the chip we got over it there you it are roof and but that's, i'm not going to say it's fine but it's it not fine to, it never he didn't have to come down no and, that, and i think that's the difference between like that was a genuine mistake and a good chip there and it was a good chip that could get over that problem 100 mil yeah it's, it's that problem solving i made it look good yeah. It looked fine, no one knew any different. How many times have you had a set of drawings where the architect hasn't set the, the windows to work, to brickwork, or doorways? Hundreds of times, exactly. architects never do. Exactly. It, it never works properly. Or you end up with your um, your movement joint when you're doing like a plot of two or three or whatever, um, and you end up with like poxy little bits of brick or whatever. You, it's that problem solving from someone else that you've got to go, well, I can't go back to the architect, so it's going to take them a lifetime to sort out just just open your perp if you're on a if you're on a long run yeah who's going to notice 12 mil or 10 mil perp on a long run they're not but it's that problem solving and having that confidence it, it, it's so, that. so so simple yeah. it is so simple but it's having that confidence and that thought to go well if we open up the perps by two mil then over the long stretch we're going to gain 100 mil because it is so far who's going to notice you're right and and we're, out, having, we're out of that problem You've dealt with it. There's a lot, a lot of bricklayers that aren't as sort of, I know, a bit more green. Yeah. Won't, won't do that. They'll be worried to do that, and they'll think, oh, I've got, to, oh, I've got to stick to that measurement. Oh, yeah. I've got to get to that. They're, they're sticking to the fundamentals. So I think, and you don't. Brickwork's not engineering. It's a man-made thing. It's clay. It never comes up the size it should do. 
I was working with bricks today, they're 220 mil instead of 215. So every brick you're gaining 5 mil. So it's your crop on a run. So no, we just set it out to work to the so, brick we oh, had. Okay. Oh, right, so you're setting it out, okay. okay. Yeah, and it was a garden wall. So we just made it work with the bricks we had. It's 220. Otherwise, if I use the brick, mate, which I think is a good tape, it's handy. Yeah. It saves a lot of time. <laughs> they cause so many problems. They do, because <laughs> the brick ain't always. 215. Yeah, it doesn't cause all the problems. Or the two, two, yeah. uh, 225. So, <laughs> yeah, they're handy, don't get me wrong, but it doesn't mean it's going to work. No, and that, and that was me going back into the apprentice kit. I said, there is no bricking, mate, in this apprentice kit. You guys need to learn how to use a tape. Um, and then it also goes to now, where I'm managing projects, and oh, it doesn't work. It goes, no, you need to take your measurements from the tops of your walls to your lintel heights, divide them up to the size of your brick and then we work out the coursing. Yeah. It's not going to always be 75 mil coursing. No, well it won't be on timber frames at times, is it? Because you have to leave your expansion gaps between your windows and your yeah. things and sometimes you have to pick or gain, grind. Same as when, you, um, when you're in the city and you're using things like shelf angle and that, um, you, you've got to pick up a couple mil um, to get to that shelf. Yeah. To get to that shelf angle for your expansion and then your piston brick. You, yeah. Otherwise it's just too tight. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you've got or you've got grind even one of the two, you've got bump or grind. But it's having that thought and, and well not thought but knowing what to do and looking at a situation, look at an elevation and go right. Well, we've got to go from A to B. We've got this and we've got that, and it's how you work around it. Not getting a gauge rod, put the gauge rod and go. Oh, it doesn't work because <laughs> life's not as easy as the gauge rod sometimes. <laughs> Uh, if it was here, if it'd be built fucking in the day. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you'll get that on refurb anyway when you're getting old to new. Oh yeah. And that you, you know, you, you have to follow what's there. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've, I've recently done a job where I've gone from, um, I've had to build an extension on the back of Imperial. Um, and you're looking at it and they're saying, we want you to match existing with a metric brick. And it's like, well, I can't, <laughs> I can't physically do that. So then you have to look at different Unless ways. you have big beds. Exactly, so then it's gaining two mil every course to then eventually start lining it up. Um, so we, we ended up with some bricks that were a little bit bigger. They were more of a 66, 67 mil, um, but then had to pick up the bed by two mil as well to make to match the Imperial course. Yeah, yeah. And then in the end, when you look at it, it's not, it's not that bad. But if I don't use a brickies, mate, I'd be fucked. Yeah, yeah, of course. I'd have never have got it. No. Um, you just got to work that shit out. Mm. Yeah, well that's that's just experience. Well, where, where do you think the where do you think the um where do you think the trade's going at the moment? Like, how do you feel about Brickland? Where do you where do you see it in the next five ten years? Uh, well, I've been saying it. Well, me and my mate have been saying it for a good while now. We're sort of becoming like the dinosaurs. Dying off. <laughs> yeah. A good brickies are to come by. Yeah, they are. They are hard to come by. But then, what annoys me is when someone gets a good brick layer, they're not appreciated. So, oh, we've got a good brick layer, gosh, do this. But then, in it, they're... Send, yeah, mugging yeah. them off. You're, you're down the road again, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I, I've... I've had, I've had a mixture, I've had good brick layers, like a really good brick layer, and I've had a brick layer. So, like, you've had your super trail and your, your brick layer. Your bricklayer would be the typical bloke who just stands like he's like he won't go and get his own muck. He's like, I'm too good for that. I'm not going to get my own bricks. Whereas you get a good super trail. You, you see, going, you get a good look, going back to Rob Song with him. A geezer that just wants to get a job done. If he's got to go for like on one occasion, go get his muck or go get a handful of bricks just because the hod's busy, he'll go and do that and he'll just get the job done. Whereas I found sometimes. Yeah, uh, I know what's, what your, what's your view? Because I know what you're saying. Well, when I was younger, we used to go to uh, South Kensington. Yeah. I was working down there for uh, Gary Oliver, I think it was, right then. And a uh, good foreman, Jack Dempsey, probably dead now, but he, he was sound. But I went off to get my own muck because the idea was flat out. He was looking after six of us. And you see me walking past it on my shoulder, he went, I don't fucking pay you to carry muck. <laughs> I'll pay you to lay bricks. 
and I said, well, what would you rather? I stand there for 10, 15 minutes, not lay any bricks, or I'll get some up and I start laying a few bricks. I said, because each one off his feet. Yeah. You know? But so, that's the point I'm making. And, and that's the problem. So a lot of bricklayers would think, well, he's telling me to fucking stand around, so I will. Yeah. I, I think it varies in your mentality, and doesn't it? And they're brought it? up that sort of way. You're yeah, yeah. a bricklayer, that's what you're paid to do, lay, lay bricks. bricks. But that's not true. Yeah, so I, I was I was very much, when I was laying, was in the mindset of, I started off by, I'd stand there and I'd wait for my muck, and someone would look at me and go, got no muck, got no bricks or whatever. Um, again, because the hold is flat out, and then, when you come away from like maybe house bashing or being with a big firm, you start working with a one man builder, you then appreciate the fact that you need to go and get some bricks. Because that, that labourer might be getting the blocks from around the front of the house, or the bricks from the front of the house. You need to go and get yourself some muck and just keep working. Yeah, of course you do. And that's with me, I'm only like a small two and one. Yeah. If the Oddy has the Monday club like they do. They do, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do? Turn up on site and stand around all day. No, you ain't gonna turn Monday, Monday just stand there like that. No. <laughs> the you're gonna have to get the stuff for yourself and crack on. Exactly. Otherwise, it's a dead day. So, bricklayers will appreciate that when they go out on their own, but when they're with big firms, they yeah, they're okay. not. They're not gonna think like that. But no. I suppose they don't have to. No. That's what they're there for, just to lay bricks. And what do you think about going back to the bricklayer and um, what they have to do? Um, what do you, how do you think the money's going? It's, it's getting higher. Do you think we're getting worth more, or do you think it's going to get to no, a point where it's going? I don't think uh, the money's going up because there's not enough of us. It's a supply and demand thing. I don't think they're paying us more money because they think we're worth it. Right. I think they're paying us more money because they have to. So it's the old school thing. I remember years ago, you'd be working on one job and someone would go he's paying £10 a day more down the road and you'd look round and fucking three or four tall bags are being picked up and they'd walk down, walk <laughs> down the road and walk get on start the... somewhere else so, and you always find off or I find with the bigger firms if they need a push they'll stick the day rate up by like 10 or £15, £20 whatever yeah. everyone thinks well that's good they'll jump ship yeah crack on for about a week and then they'll be right you look fuck off we've got our lift done we don't want you anymore because then get, you're back down to the other thing so they're getting pushed from the main contract yeah grass ain't always greener no do you know what i mean so but i think then they're your floaters that rob was saying yeah exactly you know I mean? if they're happy doing that that's great well and I, and I think going back to what you say there you're, you're right because um that, that causes so much pain to me because um, I, I mean I don't lay too much because of because of I'm waiting for my operation still um, but is you're trying to manage a group a good group of blokes and you get short because you're getting the pressure from the main contractors so you start ringing around everywhere and you're like I need some brick lads, I need some brick lads. what's the rate and you're like 210 220 215 whatever would you want like I just need need some blokes here you get the blokes like that and then you have to you have to shift through them so it's like you know normally within the first hour if, 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 as soon as they get the tool back to be fair um, and you're like yeah you can go mate it's not going to work out you can go it's going to work out and you generally find that a lot of them blokes that come now the, the floaters they're not even worth not even worth entertaining for 10-15 minutes yeah, yeah. Um, the ones that are out there now the good trials they're all earning money and they work for themselves they're not stupid they know that not to jump ship if they're getting good money, if they get a good rate, say it's 210, 220, 230, whatever it, whatever it is, wherever you are, that if you know there's a good run of work, you just stay there. Yeah. Just yeah. because someone's offered you another five or ten in a day, I think them days are a little bit, they're gone in a way. Just stay where you are, you know you're safe, to a degree. Yeah, I mean, I haven't worked on a site for... Oh. I started working for myself when I was 26. And I've done no big sort of site work since then. No, not even like Gush Club. 
subcontract yourself to a like, larger subcontractor? No. no? No, I've just done sort of like one off house builds, nice. developers, uh, extensions, stuff like that. How do, you, what, 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 do you like extensions? Uh, yeah, I don't mind. Do you normally take on just the brickwork or do you do the whole lot? I've taken on the groundwork up to sort of all plate. Okay. Yeah. And that a few times. I like high landscaping as well. Okay, so you've got all your porcelains and yeah, uh, block paving and all that sandstone, business. Sandstone, porcelain, yeah. Nice. I, I enjoy doing that um, as well. If we go, if we, um, if you if I was to ask you, what is your number one tip for an apprentice? What would it be? So you've just you were at college, and there's an employer looking for you. So it's like being on the football pitch as a kid, and you're looking to get picked up to be an apprentice. What is the number one tip you're gonna give him? Turn up every day. Yeah, it's a good start. Clear in time. Yeah. Uh, and just show that you're keen. Yeah. Because if you're not, if you're if you're there and you're half-hearted, no one's gonna to want to teach you or show you. And even if you feel someone is giving you a bit of a hard time with what you're doing, they're actually just trying to show you. Yeah. Bricklayers aren't very good at communicating. No. Do, you know, do you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's a trade where it's like it's a bit bullish sometimes. Yeah. Not always. Do you know what I mean? But no one's going to sort of pussyfoot around you if you've done something wrong. Done something wrong. Yeah. You're going to know about and, it. And they'll tell you. If you find it hard to take criticism, then you might sort of be in the wrong game. <laughs> I mean, I've been pulled up on things loads of times. Yeah. You know? You just gotta have a thick skin. So how do you take it when someone is if you if you build something and say you've got I've one I've built something that's wrong and they're not happy with it. And I'll i I'll stand back and look at it and go Oh yeah, fuck you're right. Do you know what? He's right. Yeah. Alright, I'll sort that out for you, mate. Are you happy? And yeah. I'll and I'll redo it. And that's the right attitude to have. Yeah. yeah. There's no point going of nah. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. And you'd be surprised how many bricklayers there are yeah. that or kick it over, get the other storm off, blah blah blah. That's not gonna get you anywhere. No. They just get your bad name. Exactly. You know. So, so young yeah, lads, full young dumb and full of cum don't need to. Or even even some you some of the women um, who want to become bricklayers, losing get losing your temper and kicking walls over, or if so you've done something wrong or shouting and swearing because you think it's right. It's, listen, when you're in an apprenticeship. Um, if I was in apprenticeship with you, I'm, I mean, I know because I've been there, done it. You get cocky, you get a bit complacent, you think you're above, you think you're better than the geezer that's teaching you. Being in an apprentice is, is priceless. Mm. It's, what you can learn from, from a bricklayer whose who's time certain is priceless. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of things they can pick up. Uh, I, <laughs> probably a lot of people ain't going to like me for this, but. Well, not like me for this, but I think hoodies that pick it up yeah. are never as good as a time to a brick layer that's gone to college. My personal opinion. Now, right, there might okay. be a good good few hoodies that are sort of decent enough brick layers, yeah. but I don't think that they, whoever they've worked with, they've picked up their sort of bad habits. Right. They haven't self taught themselves. No, no, yeah, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'll move you. Yeah. If you're at college and you're starting from rolling that muck, building that pyramid, pyramid. doing your first L shape, yeah. racking that back, doing whatever, learning yeah. your bonds, learning this, learning that, that's you developing it as a bricklayer to yeah. be that bricklayer you're going to become. Yeah, yeah. Whereas if you've been old carrier for a while, yeah. you've picked it up just running the line in and you've worked with a few old boys and they've taught you a few things. And you want to learn? Yeah, you, you'll be classed as a brick bar, but will you be a, a full Would you? Would you? I would you be that super trout? I don't think you would. No, like a true, like a true brick layer almost. Yeah, because yeah. you know what I mean. Although I didn't know what I wanted to do when I was fifteen, I chose brick layer. That was the only thing I chose. I didn't choose anything else. I chose brick layer. Same with yourself. You chose brick layer. I wanted to be a brick layer. Um, whereas when you meet carrier who's 30 
who's been on in for five years or whatever, and you go, actually, I quite like this. It's quite cool. I fancy being a I fancy being a bricklayer. That he's lost them years, that muscle memory mm. almost. And there's nothing wrong with that, and it's no. good that he wants to better himself. No, of course, and there's no, there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with being a hog carrier and, and improve and, and improve and get better. And yeah, and, that's great. And becoming a bricklayer, but it's not the same. I don't know what the word is cut of the cloth, cut of the grain, whatever. Yeah, so I someone, don't know what you mean. Someone's learnt it from scratch. Yeah. In a workshop and then gone out on the tools. It's, it's like a football. If you've been playing a kick in a football since you was three, yeah, and you're good at it, yeah, you you become you join the Premier League, don't you? If you if you go to college and you it's not the same contra, uh, concept whatsoever, but I know where I'm going with it, is you go to college and you learn your trade, then that is your trade for the rest of your life. Same as a footballer. He learns his trade as a footballer and you get good at it, you go to the big boys. If you're a bricklayer at college and you don't make it, you just don't make it and that's that. But if you do make it, you make the good money and your phone don't stop ringing and you mm. earn the money. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's not quite cool a million pound a week. It would be nice if it was, but it's not. Mm. Mm. I think someone is, I think it might have been that Neil, was it, the traditional group there? I think uh, he, Dean Neil, yeah. Dean, yeah. I think he mentioned that it's good for the young lads to pick up a shovel. I think it was him that said it. And muck in and learn, yeah, yeah, yeah. To, you know, that side of things as well. And I agree with that as well. I, I don't think, I don't think. I don't think you should just be a brick player. No. Um, and you I know, don't think you can there's be. There's no harm in getting your hands dirty as well, no. and, mu and mucking in. I think that's, that's a good trait to have. No one should know how to bump out or load scaffold better than a bricklayer. You should. Mm. I think as a bricklayer, you should know how to do that. Yeah, because you what you should do because you you know where you want everything. Exactly. So a bricklayer should know how to do it. The amount of bricklayers that I meet who don't know how to load a scaffold, it's, it's a very simple thing. And there is like going back to the hoddy, if you get a good one. They're worth their weight in gold, and again, I think we've lost good hoddies in this country. In this country, well, we as well. They're nowhere to be seen. I knew hoddy, uh, I worked with a hoddie before. He would read a drawing. Yeah. He'd put what you need for that flank. Yeah. He'd have ties by your board. He'd have insulation when you want it. He'd yeah. have everything. He wouldn't have to ask for nothing. No. And that's what that's what made your life easier. <laughs> and he could join up. This will make you laugh, right? So, um, in the city, a lot of the stuff we get is either silo or pre-bagged. You just got to have water to it. That's a lot of stuff is like that. Even the lime water, it's all pre-mixed with sand and lime. You just got to add the water, um, just because of space constraints, etc. And it also eliminates someone getting the gauge wrong. Now I went and worked on a job, and I asked her. It was a private job, and I took a hod carrier from me from the city, um, and I said, "Could you knock me up a four and one um, for a wall we've built?" He looked at me and went, "What four cement, one sand?" I went, "No, four sand, one cement." And he went, "Okay." So he, he's, he's put all of it in the mixer, and I'm looking at it, and I went, "Did you put any fev in there?" And he went, "No, what's fev?" <laughs> and, and this is the geezer who's been doing it for ten years in the city. Because they don't have to make stuff up. Right, yeah, yeah. So, you see what I'm saying? He, he's in his 30s, 35, however old he was. Um, he was a hog carrier. He, was, he wasn't a bad hog carrier at all. The scaffold was always loaded down. Um, my, uh, boards always had muck on them. I'd get tyres. If I arch or something, I'd get it. Give him a, if I give him a joint up, he could uh, have a go. But the actual true, like making up some muck and reading drawings and getting all your right bricks and your tyres. They're gone. Yeah, yeah, and it's, it's a shame. It's a shame. But the young kids today, they don't want to do it. No. A lot of people don't want to come into the construction. <laughs> they want to be YouTube influencers and stuff. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 yeah it, it's a hard game. I think at school they need to sort of push the industry yeah, yeah. more. I mean, when I was at school, we used to have, we had a building studies department. Yeah. And that's what sort of helped me go into. I mean, I did work with my dad from a young age anyway. Yeah. But even that building studies thing was good. 
yeah. they've got rid of them now. They don't do that. Yeah, it's it's, it's like all of the um, when you're at college. I mean, you I don't know if you remember when you're doing your level one, level two, all the classroom stuff you used to do, all the information that you just absorb, um, the history of it, the reasons why you do everything. Um, going back to the hog carrier who goes on site, they don't get to learn any of that. They just get an assessor that comes out and gives them a bit of an assessment, fill out a test paper, and they're sitting there's your blue card. Mm. Well, how are we meant to maintain our quality when we're some, not the hog carriers necessarily, but when anyone can just walk on site, learn how to pick up a trowel, roll a bit of muck, and then they've got a blue card? You, you can't. Yeah, yeah. Because it gives us a bad name. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, years ago, they used to have a, a clerk of the works. Yeah. They're gone now. Don't get them. You don't get them, so I think it's checked. You get a Q&A guy every now and then on the odd job, uh, depending if a client, if a client pays for it, you'll get a Q&A guy, he'll come round, he'll, he'll ask you what you're doing for the day, um, where you're working. And he'll but take... Do they really know what they're looking at? Do no. they know the difference? No, between... and there's no disrespect to the geezer who knows Good me. Good brickwork or bad brickwork? He... Yeah, he came to me every time and I'd talk to him and he'd ask me questions about brickwork and the tray and all that. And I could have told him that you put a tray that way, um, that's the brickwork, so upside down, um, bricks on their edge. Well, I, I could have told him what I wanted to. Mm. He'd have just gone, okay. Yeah, and I think that's a lot with these... Uh, my mate Colum, he's uh, district surveyor. Okay. Right, uh, he goes around checking for everything, blah blah blah. But then you got these private firms. Yeah. A lot of them, they're just happy with photographs. Oh right, the yeah. um, the private like building control yeah. kind of people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, <laughs> I don't really agree with them because they say, yeah, just send us a couple of photos, mate. That'll be fine. Yeah. How do they know what photo you sent them? From what job that is, you, you could be you could be down the photograph of any dam, <laughs> you know, or anything, yeah, yeah. and it's and it's passed off. He sent me some photos the other day to make you laugh. They put uh, concrete fence posts in. Yeah, there's lintels. Well, it, well it, if, it's if you told them it's all got to come down, and uh, you know people are paying people bricklayers. Well, I don't think they're bricklayers; they're just builders. Chances. Yeah. Chances. To come around and, and <laughs> so I, I think the yeah they need to bring sort of quality control sort of back. And I, and it's not just for brick lad. I think that's for all trades really. Mm. I think I think every trade um, could do with a, a watchful eye over them. Um, but then it's a cost thing, isn't it? You think if you're going to pay one bloke to literally walk around your site to have a look at the quality of work, it, I don't know, says on. Say he's on 200 a day. Yeah. But 200 a day, it's, it's, in a way, it's dead money because it's. Is it though? It's not. It's not. But in a, from a client's perspective, is well, if I'm paying if I'm paying a bricklayer like 250 quid a day, and I'm paying an electrician 320 quid a day, then surely the quality should be there. I don't need to pay for someone to come and check that everything they're doing is all right. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I agree with that as well, but. If that officer was on six or seven jobs, yeah, you're only paying for him maybe once or twice to come to your job a week. Yeah, no, of course, yeah, if he's floating around. Yeah, and he's looking at that. Now, if he picks something up and it's not good enough, that could have saved that client maybe 10 grand. Exactly. So if that whole flank and everything he's done is wrong, yeah. and it's got to come down, wouldn't you have rather given him that four hundred pound for the two days he's come? You think if a set it's a thingy. If so it's two arguments. Of course, there is. As far as you, that goes, you say 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 a clerk works salary is say it's fifty grand a year, but you build a flag of brickwork fifty meters in the sky, and it's wrong. It's going to cost you more than fifty grand to take it down and rebuild it. Yeah, hundred percent. So you've made your money. I get that side of it, but then clients. Unless a client's absolutely caked, which generally speaking they're not, it's normally a load of stay covers, isn't it? Yeah. And when you've got to try and justify an extra spend of 50 grand, they're going to go, well, do we need to spend it? Mm. So that, I think that's where a lot, I think the mentality's kind of 
of having a clerk at work on the site has gone away and then they've put it onto subcontractors or even like ourselves, the company I work for um, it's my responsibility on a weekly basis to um, fill out like a Q&A sheet like a progress report um, and take pictures of the, the work being plumb, level, gauge, um, fire barriers, uh, joint finishes, um, everything. I have to take photographic evidence like every week and upload it right. and that gets reviewed. Right. Um, and that go also goes to the client. It doesn't mean that the client's got to know what he's looking at. Someone, someone in that circle has to know what they're looking at. I could take a picture of um, a half a bucket handle finish, and then in the in the specification in the F10, it might say something like um, weather struck. Yeah, yeah. Unless that client knows what, whether the difference between a weather struck and a half round, they ain't gonna. No. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So it's having someone who knows what they're talking about or what knows what they're doing is gonna help 